Disapproved by many city councilors for its criticism on how the city is run, the Greater Sudbury Taxpayers Association is eager to clear the air. Northern Life recently sat down with executive members of the group to talk about roads, markets, and its connection with the mayor. The GSTA is a duly incorporated not-for-profit entity. The board of directors are the ones that meet every month, give direction as to where we're going and what we're doing. Okay, So let's be very, very clear that if the GSTA takes a position, it's not because somebody else outside of the GSTA has asked us to or expects us to. It's because the board of directors, all nine of them, have said that's what we're going to do. This uh, comments that uh, the GSTA is pulling someone's strings or someone is pulling the GSD strings are completely and utterly false and totally baseless. Mm -hmm. I want that to be perfectly clear. That was one of the questions you had. I'm getting very tired of, of every time uh, I read something, it's Paul Demers and Dan Melanson formerly worked for Mary Ann's campaign. Well, Paul has worked on a number of campaigns. Mm -hmm. I've worked on previous campaigns for different mayors. If Kent comes out with a position that we happen to if support... Kent, like this, we'll support we'll, we'll, we'll Absolutely. Be, we'll, we'll be all over like a dirty shirt. Yeah. 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 There's no question. And, and conversely, if the mayor were to come out and, and uh, take an opposing stand to one of them, we wouldn't hesitate to criticize her. One, one thing that's on my radar right now is uh, if the mayor thinks she's going to spend $6 million on a market place, Not we will happen. be against the mayor. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? So, I mean, there's yeah, questions there that council have to answer. Yeah. That's a whole other issue. But mm -hmm. yeah. So, the, the fact of the matter is is that, uh, as, I, as I was trying to say earlier, is... I'm a hired gun, right? I, I got a phone call. Someone said, hey, I am interested in putting together a campaign team. I'd like to, you to chat with me. I'm for hire. I am for hire. I, that's how I pay my bills. and um, So I was, I was hired to do a job. I, I still believe in that cause that there is a need for change in our community. And it wasn't long after the municipal election that we realized there ain't going to be no change happening. We're advocating on... on behalf of the GSTA's platform and the board of directors, period, dot. And if you, I, I really, and if you agree with it, you join. If yeah. you don't, you don't. And I really don't. do believe that even if, if that campaign wasn't successful and Mary Ann would not be mayor today, this association would still exist. Still be here. What they were uh, telling the people was that, okay, we're going to take 40 to 50 million bucks out of your tax money each year, and we're going to deal with our capital infrastructure projects with those dollars. And you look at a seven hundred million dollar deficit. You're never, ever going to catch up. So how do you fix something like that? You know, do, do you uh, slash the operating budget? Very difficult thing to do. You know, do you get uh, federal provincial funding? Even harder to do nowadays. You know, so the the, the thing that came to mind was the concept of. Uh, of a municipal bond, and this, that's not a new concept. Mm -hmm. uh, municipalities in Ontario have been doing it for years. It's uh, Toronto, Niagara Falls. Uh, it's it's a relatively common uh, thing to do, and they do it for this reason. The value of the city as a corporation is enormous, and virtually no debt. So you have a very very low debt to equity ratio. Right. When you go out into the financial community to try and float a bond like this, they'll be falling over themselves to. Uh, participated to issue the bond because the credit rating as a result of the low debt to equity ratio is going to be so you're going to have a stellar credit rating. We, we tried to find out what the credit rating of the city was and nobody has one. Uh, S&P, Moody's, I'll talk about all those guys, they said, we don't know. No one's, and it's because no one's gone out into the financial community to look for money so there's no reason to rate them. But if you have a call it a four billion dollar asset and a 23 million dollar debt you're going to have a triple a plus credit rating so when you go to uh, float a bond like that you're going to get the lowest uh, interest rate possible you're going to pay the lowest interest rate possible but one of the reasons why we have this huge uh, deficit in infrastructure is because of the pay as you go because you cannot pull enough revenue per year out of that operating budget in order to renew the infrastructure so 
uh, we ha the only alternative, if you want, really want to uh, uh, deal with the deficit in infrastructure and provide growth opportunities in the industrial side and, and, and the services side, is to issue this bond, a municipal bond, that will enable you to then use the operating monies to service that mm -hmm. and, and, and we get ahead of the game quickly, uh, cost effectively, and we move from uh, a policy which served this well in the past but is not part of the future. We need to look at this now, this uh, issuance of municipal bonds, as the way to move forward from here on out.